Hello, and welcome to the Biosign Q4 and Full Year Fiscal 18 results presentation. My name is Rene Gorham, and I'm the President and CEO of Biosign. I want to start today's presentation with a look at our sales, EBITDA, and net income after tax for the quarter ended December 31st. As you can see on the right side of your screen, our sales uh, reached just above $5.9 million. Uh, that was essentially flat with year ago, but enough to, uh, to present uh, a new recordly quarter of sales. The breakdown for sales for the quarter was a growth of our Canadian pharmaceutical business of 2% measured in dollars. Our international pharmaceutical business was down 2% in dollars and our legacy business was down 73% for the quarter. The legacy business represents traditionally a, a small portion of Q4 and certainly in, uh, in 2018 it represented an even smaller portion of the year. Our EBITDA for the quarter was just above $2.1 million. Uh, that was up 8% versus year ago and our net income after tax was $1.67 million, up 15% versus a year ago. So this quarter ended uh, December 31st of 18, represented our 34th consecutive profitable quarter. So looking at the same metrics on a full year basis, you can see that our sales reached $21.52 million. Uh, up 4% versus 2017. Our uh, Canadian pharma business was up 10% measured in dollars. International was down 11% and our legacy business was down 46%. So a couple of comments on the latter two. So we, we've been talking the last couple of quarters uh, about some issues that we've had with our partner getting import quota and import permits. Uh, this caused a backlog in orders. Uh, I'll be going into a little bit more detail on subsequent slides. Uh, and that certainly caused some challenges during the course of the year. The legacy business uh, has been representing a smaller and smaller portion of our overall business for quite some period of time. And uh, uh, we have seen variability year to year in sales over time. And not so much. It wasn't as pronounced over the last couple of years. but uh, it, although we did get surprised somewhat by the results for the legacy business, we were anticipating a down year. It just ended up being more, more of a down year than we had anticipated. My last comment on, on this slide is that uh, 2018 represented our ninth consecutive year of growing the top line and the bottom line. So looking back over the last five years, using 2013 as a base year, a number of metrics on the left hand side of your screen. So we grew revenue over the period of time 14 through 18 uh, by 2.8 2 times. Uh, we are now up to eight marketed products. Our net income before tax at seven and a half million was three times what it was in 2013. We generated 2.4 times more cash than we did five years ago. And our cash position has grown by five and a half times to $24.5 million on December 31st of 18. If you've been following us for a while, you'll know that uh, we've grown the business uh, and managed the business over time uh, without any debt on the balance sheet. Uh, we do have debt facilities in place, but uh, we have not used those facilities through this entire uh, growth period. A number that, uh, that folks will be a little bit more interested in now that we've announced a normal course issuer bid is what our fully uh, diluted share count is. And you can see here over that five, five year period of time, uh, our shares uh, fully diluted uh, only grew by uh, slightly more than a half a percent. So looking at our, our net income on an EPS basis, fully diluted, we grew three times from 13 cents to 39 cents over that period of time. And uh, of note, the last time we did an equity financing was in 2002. So this is a slide that you're familiar with. It looks back over the last uh, 20 quarters at uh, the evolution of our pharmaceutical business. 
and it just shows you the uh, representation of international and our Canadian business. So uh, in Q4, Canadian pharma sales were up 2%, international down 2%, as I've indicated uh, in a, a prior slide. So for the international business, you, you can see you know, quite a substantial quarter versus the, uh, the prior quarter uh, represented by the blue tips on these uh, bars. And we've now had sales in 16 consecutive quarters, but we do have significant variability quarter over quarter. We've been talking about the fact that uh, this business is lumpy. We've, see, we've been seeing it now to an extreme. And, uh, and we, we expect this to persist for some period of time. So I suppose, uh, you know, we always live at risk of, of having streaks broken. So looking at a, a breakdown of our pharmaceutical sales uh, and then our legacy business. So in Q4, uh, pharma sales reached 5.89 million. That was up 1% measured in dollars. So the Canadian business was up 2% at 5.04. Uh, on a brand basis in the quarter, Fairmax 150 was down 5% in units. Fairmax powder up 1%, Repigine up 16%, Cathagel down 6 and Agaton system up 208%. We generally look at our business uh, over a longer period of time than a quarter, and you'll see in a moment that uh, on a full year basis, uh, those negatives were actually positives. And uh, we do see a you know ordering pattern from our wholesale customers that may vary from month to month and and throw an individual quarter out. Internationally, Fairmax had sales of 850,000. This, uh, as I said, was a decrease by two percent versus uh, 2017. We've been having issues, or our partners been having issues, with getting um, uh, import permits and quotas. And uh, this created a backlog of orders uh, coming out of Q3 and into Q4. We managed to ship those orders uh, before year end, and that's reflected in the, uh, the sales uh, data that you see here. But as I mentioned before, uh, this variability will continue quarter to quarter for some period of time uh, as we go through this year and we build our order book and get those orders out the door. So the legacy business had sales of only $25,000 in the fourth quarter, a significant uh, decrease versus year ago uh, at 73%. And I'll show you here in a moment uh, what that looked like on a full year basis. So looking at the business on a full year basis, our pharmaceutical uh, business in, in total reached 20.75 million. That was up 7% over 2017. Uh, the Canadian business uh, was just above 18.5 million, up 10% versus a year ago. On a unit basis, Fairmax 150 was up by 4%, Fairmax powder 6%, Repigine 22%, Cathagel 10%, and Agaton system 133%. Internationally, uh, as mentioned before, the business contracted by 11% measured in dollars. Uh, that is 2.21 million. Uh, I've already mentioned the issues that we've been having about to trade, trade issues, permit issues, quota issues, and these restrictions have resulted in additional risk for us in that business. We, we think that this is going to continue for some time. Over a longer period of time, we think uh, our partners in the process of resolving these issues and, um, and we're looking at ways that we can assist and accommodate our partner to do so. For the full year, our legacy business delivered 776,000 in sales. Uh, this was a decrease of 46% versus the prior year. So we, we had been expecting this business to, to, uh, to deliver less in sales for the year, but, uh, but there were some adverse uh, weather conditions uh, during the harvest that, that uh, impacted the business more than we expected. Uh, we do know that uh, this business does have variability. And uh, in, in this case, uh, this was a little bit more than we had reckoned with. So we've been talking a little bit about our 
CISPU business in prior quarters, uh, we've, we've certainly identified that, uh, that there's a long implementation cycle, a long sales cycle, then a long implementation cycle. Um, this extended cycle of, uh, of adoption has impacted sales, but, but we are now you know, picking up some momentum. There are now nine Canadian hospital sites that are, that are using CISVIEW on a regular basis. So that's seven new sites added in 2018. And all of those uh, operational sites are now consistently using product and, uh, and reordering. We have an additional 12 sites that are either in implementation phase or uh, evaluating at this point in time. So on a unit basis, CISVIEW was up uh, significantly, 333%, but, uh, but that is certainly in comparison to a, a very low base uh, in the year prior. But a couple of highlights for the year that we've talked about a little bit in the past, uh, you know, worth, worth mentioning in May of 2018, Fairmax was named the number one recommended iron supplement brand in Canada. That was for the third consecutive year. We've had a, a preview of the the data that will go into determining the 2019 winners and uh, uh, let's just say it's put a smile on our face. Um, Fairmax is recommended number one by 43% of physicians that are surveyed and uh, over a third of pharmacists that are surveyed. And of note, this, uh, this is a third party survey uh, done by uh, media organizations that target uh, uh, these healthcare professionals. And, uh, and the, the, the uh, size of the sample is quite large, in excess of 1,000 of each of the healthcare professionals. In uh, September of 18, Bioscient was named to the Growth 500 ranking of Canada's fastest growing companies. This was our sixth year on that list. Uh, and our sales growth rate over the five years ending 2017, which was their measurement period, uh, was 313%. The other highlight for the year was an announcement that we made in December uh, that we had gotten TSX Venture approval for a normal course issuer bid uh, to repurchase for cancellation up to 950,000 shares. That's done over a 12 month period of time. Certainly the, the approval is for a 12 month period of time. We, uh, we started in December uh, repurchasing, uh, purchased over uh, 92,000 shares in December. You'll see that reflected in our financial statements uh, and the MDNA for share counts. Subsequent to the year end, uh, January, February, uh, we also uh, purchased 55,700 shares. And uh, in total, that's just under 148,000 shares that we've repurchased, and that's to March 18th. And I imagine uh, uh, our share count is something you'll want to keep a close eye on as we go forward. This slide outlining our product portfolio and our product uh, life cycle as featured before. We've got a number of products that are in the growth phase that we talked about. Uh, uh, those brands that were contributing to our growth in the Canadian market and to, uh, to our business uh, outside of Canada. Uh, we have we've only got one product now that we consider in launch stage. And we do have uh, three assets in the regulatory process. They're all in with Health Canada and uh, we wait with bated breath. Quick look at our balance sheet. Our cash and short term investments uh, grew by 26% for the full year. And this, of course, is net of our investment which was initiated in December for the NCIB. We continue to build our balance sheet for deployment opportunities. We're, we've looked at a number of assets, some of them which would be um, immediately accretive, and uh, that process continues. I've already talked about the fact that uh, we had uh, no debt uh, at, at year end, and uh, that, that didn't change over the course of the year. Our equity, of course, uh, through the NCIB would have reduced, in this case, uh, just under by uh, under 746,000. And uh, one 
can anticipate that uh, that line changing somewhat as well. So that leads us into a look at our our cash position and our cash generation. So this slide shows you over the last three years our our cash position growing from 13.7 million to 24.4 and our cash generation on an annual basis. So you can see uh, last year's cash generation of uh, 5.09, uh, somewhat below a year ago uh, cash generation, even though net income after tax was greater. Uh, but you see there the, the deployment, uh, the, the effect of the deployment of cash uh, into our NCIB. So obviously our profitability and our, our cash position affect our ROE calculation. Uh, you can see here the change in our cash, cash position over the last five years, uh, this growing from 2014 of just under 8 million to the, uh, the 24.4 that I've already mentioned. And our uh, average return on equity uh, coming in at 23% for the year. I've spoken about this before. We certainly don't need uh, all of the cash on our balance sheet uh, to run our business. In fact, uh, we estimate that uh, that we need about 10% of it. So another way to look at uh, our ROE is uh, net of the cash position that we have. A quick look at our EPS. So on the left-hand side of your screen, you see the last eight quarters of net income after tax and diluted EPS. So in the fourth quarter, that was 11 cents per share uh, of net income on a fully diluted basis. And on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see how that sums up to uh, 39 cents and how that compared to a year ago at 36 and how that's evolved over the last uh, several years. So a snapshot of our uh, shares outstanding options and uh, fully diluted. So that's an, a number that you'll likely be wanting to keep an eye on in light of the normal course issuer bid. So our common share count as of March 18th was 14,382,815. Reading the screen here for you, highlighted in a red circle. And on a fully diluted basis, 14,527 and change. So uh, those are t uh, two figures that uh, over time had not been changing much and uh, they may change a little bit more here as we go forward into the balance of the year. Wanted to uh, close the presentation by thanking you for your continued interest in the company. We may not look like there's much going on, but it's like the proverbial uh, iceberg. There's many things happening below the surface and we look forward to reporting on those uh, activities and accomplishments as, as the year progresses. Thank you very much.